Does Appos' Caspian make my top five under 500? Stick around, let's find out. Greetings, mates. Stuart Charles here, home studio, basics.com, helping you make sound decisions leading to a beautiful audio experience that will make you fall in love with music, not gear, all over again. So, so I'll tell you right off the bat, both build and comfort here are nearly impeccable. Comfort especially is remarkable. I mean, I've worn these for three and a half hour sessions without taking them off at all. Uh, clamp force on the sides of your head is perfect. The top of the headband doesn't dig at all. And all in all, they're just exemplary. Uh, you can wear these for extended sessions without adjusting at all, basically. Now the pads here feel really good. Um, they are sheepskin leather and have an acoustic memory foam on the inside. The headband is natural leather and the main portion is made of stainless steel. So just an incredibly well-built headphone all around. The With the ear cups being an all natural oak sourced from the North Caucasus Mountains. So. It does feel like a lot of care and effort went into making this headphone and I definitely applaud Apples for that. Uh, I was fairly surprised when I got it. I wasn't expecting it to be nearly as durable and uh, robust as they are. So let's get right into the sound. Right off the bat, the highlight of this headphone is definitely the bass. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised at how well the mid bass was handled. Normally if companies decide on a mid bass shelf, they tend to screw it up. <laughs> Here there is a 5 decibel shelf from 20 hertz to around 200, but the catch is that it doesn't feel overdone over... <laughs> the catch is that it doesn't feel overdone like your mom's meatloaf. Ma, the meatloaf! Fuck! <laughs> it was not planned. <laughs> yeah, it's not overbearing. There's definitely a mid-bass rise but it feels natural. It feels like a bass head's headphone should sound. In other words, it has impact, it slams, but it doesn't sound obnoxious, uh, or overly forward, bloated, muddy, clammy. None of that applies here. So, so it's a fun bass, but it doesn't sound uh, overly aggressive in your face. Insert word salad here. Moving into the mid-range of treble, this is not a overly analytical, detailed sound. It's more relaxed, um, a little bit more subdued. Definitely mimics the Harmon response curve in some ways. I will say vocals can sometimes sound a tad overshadowed by the bass. This is definitely the exception and not the rule, but you will notice um, the low mid-range dip or gentle slope as I like to refer to it as definitely contributes to this. Now it does come back up around 2.5 kilohertz, which is just about perfect for me um, because that's kind of where our ears expect to rise. And so most of the time, I'd say the majority of the time, vocals are going to sound pretty crisp uh, and just forward enough to keep you engaged. Now, Fish's Shade is a good example of this and a good example of vocals sounding a little bit pushed back would be on Kid Cudi's Heart of a Lion. Now, I think that was just the way the track was recorded because, as I said before, this is the exception and not the rule. Vocals mostly sound good, and the low mid-range slope downward is not going to be too problematic uh, in the majority of cases, so, so you won't have to worry much there. The other thing to note is that while a track like First of the Month from Bone Thugs and Harmony sounds absolutely incredible, um, especially for a track recorded in 1995, um, it sounds punchy and rich and hits really hard, but on the other hand, with some tracks the resolution could definitely be better. The Caspian is certainly not as resolving as an Aria. Most people probably won't um, care too much about this. Now, audiophiles will definitely notice, and I also notice as well, but you know, it's something that I can kind of give a pass to because the, res the resolution isn't horrible, it's just it just really could be improved a little bit. For instance, I, I think this is, sound-wise, this is um, more of a $300 to $400 headphone, boosted to $500 by virtue of an incredible build, comfort, extra balanced cable, and carrying case. And they even give you a sticker, which is, you know, whatever, but I kind of like stickers, so. <laughs> Sue me! Now, another point of contention uh, with some people may be the treble. So, as mentioned previously, you know, this kind of mimics the Harmon response in terms of treble, so treble here is going to be leaning darker, um, 
definitely not sibling at all so you're never gonna have to worry about that but I will say that at times it can lack some sparkle uh, zip uh, may come across as a bit dull sounding definitely keep that in mind for those who um, maybe require a little bit brighter of a treble it's definitely here something to take into account before purchase so yes I recommend them I would caution you to stick to well-recorded polished modern music for the most part although they do work for most genres I would say um, I'd stick mostly to hip-hop indie pop pop uh, electronic type of music because it's going to sound the best rock does work but not quite as well as the others a running theme when you're listening to these will be that you'll notice it's not trying all that hard to impress you which is definitely a good thing it's very smooth uh, liquidy sounding again might not qu be quite as resolving enough for some people but overall definitely a, a good sounding headphone for sure as far as amplification you're not really gonna need to go too crazy here um, at 33 ohm and 115 decibels sensitivity they're very efficient and you know I would probably pair them with something on the more neutral side. So for instance, I use these with the Playmate 2 from Burson, uh, Fios K5 Pro, and the Zencan. And I would definitely lean towards something like the Playmate or the Dragonfly Red, both of which utilize the uh, ESS chip. I'm not a huge fan of Synergy or anything like that. Um, but I definitely wouldn't pair these with something on the warmer side because it's just going to be too much Because I would say that the Caspian overall is Definitely a warm-ish sounding headphone at times lacking detail So so yeah, I'll leave links down below for where to buy as well as my uh, review so check that out and Don't forget to ask me about my grandchildren and don't ever give up I...